What is up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about the Beak 6.5 or the Beak 65. It is a very interesting keyboard and I'll show you guys right now what this thing actually looks like. Now we actually did look at this keyboard on Twitch way back when we did a very first revision of the prototypes which did need a few pieces of work. Two major things being the actual knob in the keyboard would actually flex too much and cause some distress on the actual plate which has been addressed and then the other thing being that the case wouldn't actually close very well and it only used four screws it now uses eight and I'll show you guys how they implemented that too. Now just a few notes about the Beak 6.5, this is going to run at 399 euros or 450 USD roughly and it's expected to ship in Q2 2022. And to address the elephants in the room, or in this case Beak, this keyboard design is not going to be for everyone. I'm already well aware of that. I like this type of keyboard. I do think of keyboards more of an art piece and a statement piece on a desk as well as something that's functional. So it has both function and form. That's the way I view keyboards. Not everyone might look at it that way. Some people want sound, some people chase after typing feel, and it's okay to look for different things in keyboards. I really want to push that. It's okay to look for different things in keyboards. So if you're looking at this keyboard going, hmm, this beak is just not for me, it's all right. You cannot like it. That's totally okay. But I actually do really like the keyboard. I think the keyboard looks beautiful. But as for typing feel, sound, and the rest of the stats of this keyboard, we'll dive into that right now. I also really need a haircut. Like, this hair is actually getting out of control. At least my mustache is okay today. Now this is the Beak 6.5. Honestly, I really like the way this thing looks. I am using some different keycaps today. These are a PBT keycap set from Sharu Designs. They're based off the three starter Pokemon. There is two other colors of this set. I quite like them, but past this, the keyboard itself, I do think is quite beautiful. Now they do classify this keyboard as a 65% keyboard. I would tend to agree, but also I would definitely say this is a 60% keyboard just with arrows and a giant knob on it. But honestly, I do think that it fits that 65% itch with the arrow keys and some other quick stats this is a top mount keyboard with a 6.5 degree typing angle it's estimated to weigh about 4.2 pounds when you fully build it and it does have a nice front height of 19.4 millimeters which i do like i kind of go between that 18 to 20 range myself so this is very comfortable for me and it will have qmk and via support and the keyboard itself does have a few things in the package as well. I did not receive a retail package. Mine was already kind of in this styrofoam box type of thing, but it will include a top and bottom case, a polycarbonate plate, a weight, a PCB, which you guys can see right over here. I do have one that's disassembled. It will come with a rotary encoder, a JST connector, a daughter board, some screws, and knob alignment foam, as well as a hex key for the knob itself. And I would suggest not losing this thing. This is the hex key that it came with. It's very, very small. As you guys can see, this is used to lock the knob in. Yeah, don't lose this thing. At the current time of this sale too, this will only be coming in E-White and E-Black, which I'm kind of disappointed. I do believe the one that I built was this beautiful navy and gold one. I'm not the biggest fan of navy myself, but honestly, I would have liked to see some color variations with this. I'm not mad at the fact that it only comes in two colors, but I definitely would have liked to see this beautiful piece of art in some different colors. Now, the first thing I did want to talk about was the PCB. Now, excuse the mess here, this thing's already been built in, but it does have a few pieces here which I wanted to talk about. One being this is solder only. So if you guys were looking for a hot swap unit, this one here would not support that. Another thing is the generally fixed layout for a solder PCB, which is kind of disappointing to be honest. You don't get options for different space bars. You don't get the option for a stepped caps lock. You only get the regular caps lock. You do get a split left shift over here, but you don't get something like a split backspace. And you also don't get something like you'd find in a lot more of the more compact 65s, which is a split right shift, which is kind of disappointing. I would have liked to see a bit more variance than the actual layout itself. More variety is usually better for people who are used to different layouts and honestly can help a product sell better. But yeah, this one here doesn't have a lot of options. Past that though, the PCB is fine itself. It does have the giant area over here for the rotary encoder. It does feature a daughter board, which is nice. So there's the GST connector for it there. But yeah, it's pretty basic. There's nothing too crazy about the PCB. Again, I would have liked to see more options for this in the future. Now let's talk about the actual shape and form of this keyboard. Now it does sit pretty nicely again with that smaller front height. It does look very simplistic. It has wider bezels here on the left and right side, which kind of make it look really nice. It gives it a different aesthetic, as well as that beautiful beak or triangle here at the top. And when we flip the keyboard over, we can see that giant brass weight over here, which is the beak of the keyboard. Now, what's really cool about this is the actual USB port sits inside of the beak. And honestly, it looks pretty nice. Uh, the USB cable does hide within that actual beak itself, and it looks really cool. It looks like a mouth of a bird, which is kind of interesting. And I'm sure a lot of people are wondering as well, will this tip side to side if you put too much pressure on it? Not really, it doesn't move anywhere, but if you were someone who actually presses very hard on your escape lock, it does tilt from side to side. And I'll show you guys here on a side angle as well.
And I'm sure this will only happen during some sort of like epic gamer moment or something like that, but during my use of this keyboard the last few days as well as the last revision, it never happened from daily use. But it is something that I thought we should note. And another piece of case construction that we see different from the last iteration of this is these four screws here. Now the very first prototype that I tried only had these four corner screws, which left a pretty nasty gap here at the top which isn't there anymore, which is nice to see. You don't see any sort of gap or anything in the actual metal itself. And from a builder's perspective, I don't mind there being two different types of screws in the back, but I would have preferred from an ease of use standpoint, having just one screw. I do think that anybody might prefer that. Having to swap between screw heads isn't my favorite thing in the world. So yeah, I don't love that part. But however, I do wish this was implemented a little more gracefully. But let's open up the case and see what's inside the beak. And I wanted to stop the video for one second because I do get a lot of questions about this. This is called the wow stick and it's hard for me to keep a straight face while doing this. But this does come in a very um, questionable looking box. It looks like a certain something. It's called the wow stick. It has precision screwdriver, but it's a very, very light font because they don't want you to see that. It says 69 over here and then over here in very small words, it says easy and enjoyable. Whoever designed the package for this, all I got to say is you knew what you were doing and good job. And here is the inside of the beak after we've removed all eight of the outside screws. Now in the inside of the beak, there actually isn't a whole lot going on. You can see the daughter board hiding inside the beak over there. It's a flat bottom over here where the screws are holding up the actual big weight over here, as well as the lengthy, generous JST connector cable. And here is the top piece of the beak. You guys can see where it's mounted from the top, which is those eight screw points on the actual plate itself. I would have done one thing different with this, and that is not include this particular screw point on the plate right underneath the space bar. Typically that offers a kind of awkward space bar sound or typing feel. I would have actually put the screw points here and here, but you can probably actually just remove that entire screw at the bottom there where the space bar is. It shouldn't affect the actual construction of this too much, but it might make the plate slash PCB combo sag just ever so slightly because there isn't a large amount of screw points here on the bottom. And if you guys remember the revision one prototype we did for the beak, the knob itself would actually sag or get stuck sometimes when we pressed it down. They've now added this very thin foam which kind of goes in between the PCB and plate, which doesn't allow that to happen anymore, which is a good fix. Honestly, I don't mind this. It kind of just friction fits inside and eliminates the problem entirely. And it's one of the nicer feeling knobs I've used in a while. But one little negative thing that we're going to bring up is this unit actually has a small tiny issue with it that I can't seem to fix and I've tried desoldering the switches and I've tried using different switches, desoldering those, putting the originals in, trying different keycaps. The arrow keys, particularly the left, right and up key, all rub against the actual case. Now I was assured this didn't happen in any other of the prototypes, but can't be too sure so I did decide to note that down as well. And there we have it, there's the Beak 6.5 fully built, and I'll show you guys a quick little sound demo here right now. And that was the Beak 6.5. Overall, it feels like a top mount keyboard, so if you like that, then I think you'll like the Beak 6.5. It's very beautiful as well. I think that it looks really, really nice. And in terms of sound profile, it's not for me. I don't think that this sound profile is something that I'm looking for in keyboards at this current time. I'm more into something a little bit more clacky, a little bit more high pitch. God, I hate the word clacky. Now, some things that I would have liked to see changed in the actual Beak 6.5. One, I definitely think the most important thing right now for the Beak 6.5 is getting rid of that kind of rubbing of the arrow keys. Again, if this was just limited to my prototype version, then I'd be happy with that. At this point in time, I have no way to kind of prove that, but hopefully that does get rectified for the actual production run, which is happening at the time of release of this video as well. And one thing that I would absolutely love to see on a future rendition of a Beak if there is one is more layout options. But let's talk about the typing experience of the Beak 6.5. Now, just because it uses a polycarbonate plate doesn't mean it's gonna be a soft typing experience. It does actually lend to a little bit more of a stiff typing experience. It also doesn't have any sort of stress cuts or flex cuts in the actual PCB or plate itself too. So you can expect a more stiff slash solid typing experience out of the Beak 6.5. 
But yeah, that's the Beak 6.5. And if you guys like these type of videos, please hit subscribe, like, comment down below. And I hope as we enter the holiday season here, you guys all have a great time. Stay safe and enjoy keyboards as well as everything else you guys do. And take care, everyone. Peace.